Using ArcGIS as a platform for science really allows us to interact, visualize, and analyze data. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, one of the important areas of study is the human impact on our oceans. So today we're going to look at a couple of uh, uh, projects where I looked at noise pollution and plastic pollutions off the coast of Southern California. So to begin with, uh, we'll look at, we, we brought in some data from Marine uh, Cadaster, which is a NOAA and DOI program. One of the data sets that I utilized to try to understand this problem was the Ecological Marine Units, which is a great set of data that was uh, developed in, in a partnership with the USGS and many other members of, with the Group on Earth Observation Community. So what, what I did is I, I downloaded uh, all the Ecological Marine Units as a map package, as a pro package, and I loaded them into uh, a 3D scene here. So we have this expressive, beautiful visualization of all the water columns across the entire ocean. And it, it accompanies uh, with really detailed data. So for my main study area, I'm going to look at four transects here. We'll just zoom right in. I'm going to switch the symbology so that we just get a little bit better view. Right? And we can use these, these four transects to create a fence diagram using a new tool that's in Pro. So this fence diagram tool essentially takes those four transects and very quickly interpolates the ecological marine units directly onto the vertical surface of the, of the fences. It gives us a much better view of our study area. These ecological marine units come with really detailed data like temperature and salinity and other, chemi uh, other chemistry for the ocean. And we can utilize that data in symbology as well. So we can look at temperature of the water columns. And we can also uh, produce charts such as salinity with depth. Now this chart is showing the variability of across all of the water columns in our study area for salinity versus depth. So we see there's much more variability near the surface as compared to at depth. Salinity and temperature are also key uh, measures when we're trying to determine how noise propagates through the ocean. Let's uh, go ahead and calculate the location of that deep sound channel. Again, using a Python tool, which uses uh, some scientific libraries to calculate temperature profile and a sound speed profile, but also identifies the mixed layer base, the thermocline, and the inflection point of that sound speed profile, which is the location of the deep sound channel. We can perform that same calculation across our entire uh, study area and add that as a three-dimensional surface to our map. So this gives us a much better understanding of how noise pollution may impact the, the marine life in the area. So that's a quick study of how sound may move through the ocean. Now let's switch to plastic pollution. Plastics are moved across the planet along the main currents. They're also influenced by the speed of those currents. They eventually accumulate in the middle of these things called gyres, these, these swirls in the middle of the ocean. And over the years, there have been several expeditions uh, where they sample the surface water and measure the concentration of plastics. So we can use these observations along with the current direction and speed as explanatory variables within this empirical bayesian Kriegian regression prediction model. It does all those things, okay? And it, what it does with those is it produces a continuous surface that represents the concentration of plastics across the Pacific. So now we can target these darker areas which uh, indicate higher concentrations of plastics. We can target them for more research and mitigation. So while it's important to understand plastic pollution and noise pollution, it's also, as I mentioned, important to communicate to the public and educate them about our multidimensional oceans by telling stories. And the stories should be about the dynamics of the surface so we really understand our impact, but also the dynamics of our planet. And, all, and within our stories, we should give people analytical tools science-backed analytical tools that will show the paths plastics will eventually take. So I hope you've been able to see how ArcGIS as a platform for science allows us to connect with our data in very meaningful and important ways, how we can perform analysis and honestly share our science to everyone.